avoid that, guys. Real estate fly-throughs aren't really the most exciting thing to watch, but it's a good side hustle. It's so expensive to live where I am right now. Like, even the shittiest looking house is a million dollars. So, like, all of us basically have, like, 10 jobs. Now I'm into FPV drones, why not? It's fun to do, and there's a market out there for this stuff. So, this drone needs no introduction. Just say it anyway, it's a Cinelog 25. Everyone and their grandma has one. I did a few modifications to this. I mean, for a time being, I did take it apart and, you know, left it to die. But after watching Sean Katz real estate videos, I got really inspired because I shoot real estate as a side hustle for the last 10 years. And I was like, you know what? I, I think I can do this. I brought this back from the dead. I, I put it back together. I bought new prop guards for it and I started tinkering around. What I did was before there was actually a Polar Vista in this, instead I had a spare Nebula Nano Pro that I put on instead so this the mount that it comes with can squish in a little bit and, and you know We don't really need good quality through the goggles because this is just you know like a professional job, right? So this is this nano camera was good enough for me. The good quality is coming from this, right? Other other things I did to reduce weight was I actually naked the Vista inside I'm sure some of you are familiar to do that now You just have to make sure you fly right away and don't beat around the bush and let it overheat before there was a full-size Immortal T on here, I changed it to a smaller version. I tested many different types of props. Uh, this one usually comes with a three-bladed prop. I found it more like, you know, more jumpy and it, it was good for performance. Since I want smooth performance, I played with uh, HQ prop, eight-bladed props, and I played with the, with the six-bladed props. And I found for the eight-bladed props, it was very, very smooth, but as you've gone over like a hard surface, you want to fly over like a table sometimes, like it would just like want to like drop, like it just lost like airflow or something. Like these six bladed props were like a good in between, I would say, from being jumpy to not getting sucked onto a table or losing that airflow under you. So there was one huge problem with this quad that I didn't like was every time you crash, this whole top plate would just fly off with the camera. And then I also tore off the coaxial cable. The Cinelog 35 and like the newer Cinelogs addressed the issue. They actually put like nuts or some sort of tie down for these, these rubber bobbins now. What I did was actually I, I had spare 7075 M3 screws, which is like aircraft grade, super lightweight. And I put them through at least four of the sides here secured with a nut at the bottom. So I just took a spanner and then I just screwed them in on each side. So now like this isn't going anywhere. Like, so I also have a GoPro mount on the Cinelog. I actually printed this from Thingiverse. I'll put the link in the description below. It's not totally perfect, I would say, but you know, it still fits an M3 screw through there. You know, I'm sure there's a better way to do this. Like you could, you, you see how like, when I bend the camera forward, the whole mount kind of just lifts like right here. But yeah, I also have a wire uh, that powers the GoPro from the FC. So these are actually soldered directly to the positive and negative of the AIO. This way I can you know, power it on and record. I can even use the touchscreen to change parameters on the job. The Flywoo GP10 or GP11 or GP9 comes with this as well. You plug it in there and you just plug it into your, your battery's uh, balance plug and then it will power the naked GoPro. I know some Cinewoops are now coming out with the O3 air unit built inside. I think those would be interesting to try where you probably don't need to have the GoPro on top anymore because having the GoPro on the top would, I think it creates even more strange weight balance issues. But I have a few DJI O3 air units and I'm, I'm quite impressed with it. But the downside with going through that is you just have to be dependent on Rocksteady or Gyroflow. What's cool about the GoPro is it has professional grade stabilization built in and then you can get real steady software, which is also what I use and it's like superior. So it's like two layers of stabilization for your professional job, right? Well, the O3 Air unit, uh, Rocksteady is not professional grade, I would say. I mean, it just, I would turn it off and then gyro flow will give you a lot of parameters to tweak and stuff but I have no idea how it will react in an interior environment because I've never tried it but maybe in the future. I'd stick to what's known and true for now and so I put my Cinelog 25 on the scale with the GoPro and all it needs is a battery but it's pretty much ready to fly. 
it's 186.52 grams. You could, you could put a LiPo under 700 ma on this and it would be sub 250G. All right, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope seeing my Cinewoop setup can help you out on your next job. If there's any products you're curious in, just go to the links below. I have some affiliate ones and non-affiliate links and you can go check it out and soup up your drone. If you liked the video, please thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.